Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another AI Research Bytes. Uh, this series of short and informative talks showcase cutting edge research work from the ServiceNow AI's research team. The AI Research Bytes are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. Today's session will feature a 15 minute talk from Alexandre Lacoste, follow, followed by a quick Q&A. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, put them in the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Alexandre, who is with us today, uh, is a research scientist in the Human Decision Support Team. He previously joined Element AI early in 2017 as its first research scientist and worked at Google's uh, research group uh, prior to that. His main research interests involve around LM agents for solving UI tasks and other involve uh, causality, probabilis probabilistic machine learning, meta learning, and more. So today we uh, will get uh, a good, an awesome overview of capable uh, web agents. So uh, up to you, Alex. Thank you so much, Fanny. Great. Um, yeah, thank you for being with me uh, today. Uh, so what we're going to talk mainly today is about the work arena. This is a benchmark that we recently developed that's based on the ServiceNow platform. Does it sound good, Fanny? Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so it's going to be breaking down into three points. First, how can we build uh, a web agent? And second, perhaps most importantly, how to evaluate it? And finally, how can we make it better? First step, uh, so you probably know by now, but the interaction uh, that you have with the LLM is by first building a prompt. What we're going to put in the prompt here is going to be the task descriptions. We want to make agent that's going to accomplish tasks for us uh, on the web. So we're going to also cramp the whole web page in the prompt. And we can also provide an action space. Uh, we're going to describe which kind of action the agent can do. All of that is going to be sent to the large language model. Who's going to respond with an answer that hopefully is going to be in the form of action one and action two. Next, using our backend, uh, we're going to use Python to extract the action and, and send them to Playwright, which is a Python package for interacting with web page. Uh, this um, uh, package will update the web page, which we will then uh, send back to the prompt for completing the loop. That simple loop is giving us an agent that can interact with an environment and able to accomplish tasks for us. We're going to go even more concretely. Imagine you have a simple form to fill on the right. It's just a single text field, and you have a submit button. The task is enter Enola into the text field and press submit. Uh, then this is an example of the web page that is uh, being introduced and uh, as form of uh, HTML. In the, in the prompt. And it's an ex example of a simplified action space where we only have fill, click, and mouse move are described as a, in a form of functions. And we also give an example of how we want the LNM to answer us so it's easier to extract. This is an example of a good response. Uh, we extract, we would extract what's in the bracket here and fill 14 and OLA. 14 here is a backend node ID. So it's something specific that we did in our uh, backend where we injected those ID in the web page uh, to facilitate communication with the agent. So we like as it reads a web page, it realized this is uh, element 14. So it's going to click on it and write Enola. And then it's going to click on element 15. Let's see it in action. Uh, it's writing Enola. And then it's going to click Submit. Now let's take a moment to appreciate how simple that is it is like you can take half an afternoon uh with the experienced engineer or maybe not to write this thing and play with it and you would have an agent that would do tasks for you on the web it's been 70 years that the field of computer science has been trying to make intelligent things and now that we have this machine that can predict the next token we just have to make a small wrapper to develop an agent okay but it doesn't stop here we saw that developing a basic web agent is easy. But what we want is developing a competent, safe web agent. And this is going to be much harder. The first step for that is going to build a, uh, build a benchmark uh, that's going to be able to measure the ability uh, that we care about. There are already benchmarks out there. So MiniWeb is one that I particularly like. It's 
125 different tasks with a great variety of widgets and 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 also some like every time you do the same task it's not exactly the same so it's a great benchmark the only issue it's too toyish it's not representative of real world task it would not measure properly uh, our ability to uh, the ability of agents to solve tasks Turns out that at ServiceNow, we have a comprehensive cloud-based platform for end-to-end -end digital transformation. It's connecting people who need to, to work done uh, to people who can do the work. Uh, it's also used by tens of millions of users. So why not using that platform for making a benchmark? Well, this is exactly what we did. So what we see here is um, an agent working on the ServiceNow platform, executing a task. And, but we need more than one task to properly evaluate an agent. Actually, we're going to need even more than that. Uh, prefer preferably, eventually, uh, 100 tasks and uh, from uh, easy to complex to be able to properly quantify the ability of our agents. So Work Arena, it's Dynamics environment in the sandbox. So you can send your agent in there. It can roam around, do the right thing, do the wrong thing. Uh, if it managed to solve the task, it's going to get the points. Uh, there's at the moment there's about 30 tasks and plates in the ServiceNow platform. So each task, uh, once you if you return to it, it's going to be uh, slightly different. It's going to it's going to reframe uh, the, the all the elements of the task in uh, in different ways. And in total, we have about 10,000 tasks instances that we can uh, play with like that. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, crucially, uh, all the evaluation is fully automated. So you don't need human in the loop. You don't need to rely on an external LLM to uh, evaluate the quality of your agent. But most importantly, it's representative of modern work platform. At the same time, we also op open source browser gym. It's a backend for evaluating the web agents. So in this platform, we included MiniWA that we saw earlier. We included our new benchmark, Work Arena. And we also included a uh, recent benchmark called Web Arena that is similar, but for uh, more out there in the web task. Uh, it's complementary. And we hope that people will adopt this platform and bring new benchmark to the table. Uh, Browser Gym is also brought in in that. Uh, it's uh, it's meant to make it easy to develop new agents. You can try a bunch of new features that we can progressively integrate integrate in the platform, and we can streamline experiments across the various benchmark to have rapidly a good idea of how good the agents are. Uh, hopefully, this platform is going to be adopted by a wide range of people and become the default place where people uh, place their new agents. Let's put that all together and see uh, what happened if we run an agent uh, in the OnServiceNow platform. I see there's Q&A. Should I answer the, the questions right away? Uh, in the demonstration that you showed, sorry? Should I wait at the end? At the end, but you get, it's a very good question. So the, the question was, uh, in the demo uh, that you showed, uh, was it the human uh, acting or an agent? Uh, should the service not have was this a human acting for you? No, so far it's only agents. There's no human. No human has been exploited in these demos. Um, except for coding. <clears throat> okay. Uh so here we're gonna see the, the, the first real demo. And um uh what we see on the left side is a chatbot that we can interact with to ask for a task. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see the agent uh, performing some actions. OK, let's click here. So we're asking, what is the Wi-Fi of Office 456? So all of this is simulated data in an instance uh, that we created for the benchmark. So it's using the search box up there, realizing that Article 10 is likely going to be useful. And it's finding the information right here and extracting it and bringing it back into the chat box. Uh, and also here in gray, what you see is the thinking process. We use in the back end, we use chain of thoughts and we expose the, the thinking process. It's it's kind of very interesting sometimes, and it's it's useful to gain trust in what it's doing because you don't only see the answer, you also see the reasoning process. Um, so sorry, it's starting back. Okay, sorry for the demo coming back again. Um, so I'm gonna try to pause the video. There we go. Uh, so 
crucially, this is zero shot. Nothing about ServiceNow is specified. There's not nothing in the um, there's no few shot example of how to use ServiceNow. And the 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 LLM was not fine-tuned on ServiceNow, except it's GPT and it it did saw the ServiceNow platform out there and lots of documentation. Um, but on the other hand, the this is GPT based, so it's not open source. It's also very slow. The video is four times longer, the original one. We just extracted the little snippet that were interesting for, for your own entertainment. Uh, but we have to realize it's actually slow and expensive to use it. Okay, here, if you're gonna play with the benchmark, the first challenge that you're gonna face is the massive amount of token. Uh, in white here, oh, first on the left, here you see the, the y-axis is in logarithmic scale. It goes from 1,000 to 1 million. And in white, it's the number of tokens in Miniwub. It says for each step, we look at what was the maximum you could you could meet. And the maximum page size for Miniwub was, mini was um, 10,000. And Worker Arena is 100 times bigger, going all the way to 1 million token. So if we compare to the, the the window context window size of most LNMs out there, it's not even able to digest the one million token. Like the, the biggest one is Claude with two hundred thousand tokens window, and it's not even there. And even if you manage to somehow summarize it a bit and cramp the information in the context window, it's going to be slow and expensive if you put everything in there. Uh, and also, if you if you put too much information, your agents tend to be overwhelmed and um, Confuse the they're going to be spurious um, association and it's going to degrade the performance. So one solution for that is to work with the accessibility tree. This was a technology for uh, visually impaired user uh, to help them interact with web page. And so if your web page is accessibility compliant, you're going to have a couple of HTML tags that's going to describe which elements of the web page are more important. It's going to have like the important information for summarizing. The, um, uh, each of these elements. If you extract only the accessibility tree, it can have a prompt that's 10 times smaller. Uh, so it's exactly the, the, the kind of scale that we need. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, the, those agents are meant to go on the world wild web uh, and not all websites are accessibility compliant. Of course, ServiceNow will be accessibility compliant. Uh, but yeah, they, we faced other challenge like uh, they, they use shadow dumps and iframes. Uh, which uh, actually make extracting the accessibility tree much harder. We managed to um, to solve that and uh, put it in browser gym. Uh, <clears throat> but it, you know, like now it's done. It's working well with accessibility tree. Uh, we'll see um, results with that later. Other approach is uh, to use vision. So if you look just at the image, uh, you would solve the problem of not having all of these tokens of the HTML page. Uh, so, but for that, you need to use visual language model, VLM. They are able to uh, interact with image. They're able to understand images at a, up to a certain degree and answer question, uh, but they're not gonna be able to tell you click on coordinate 3255 uh, because this is low level details that was lost into uh, understanding the image. Interestingly, uh, recently Web Voyager paper uh, leveraged the idea of set of marks and they augment the screenshot with semantic information uh, like bounding box and, and IDs. And by doing so, then the VLM is able to say, hey, click on button 17. So um, uh, this brings back the usage of image uh, into the easy to try options for our agent. Now let's integrate that again and look at demos. Uh, this was for the uh, GTC presentation. So I um, I asked, it, okay, how can I attend GTC 2024 from NVIDIA headquarters? And it goes on, realized that uh, using Google Map would be, uh, using Google search would be good and goes in Google Map, put the information. But then it realized that GTC 2024, it's not something that Google Map understands. So it's saying, hey, what do you want me to do? Uh, I kind of told him, just figure it out. So, so, okay, it goes back on Google, search for uh, GTC 2024 location. But now see, it's trying to click on the search button that's under the drop down menu that just appeared. And this is normal because it's it's kind of doing a sync, but it, after realizing that it doesn't work, it figure out its way and it managed to click, get the information and go back to Google map and enter the proper information. Okay, now we can go to uh, the conference. And luckily I was not late 
because of that. Uh, next, uh, I think this is my favorite demo so far. Uh, so, uh, no, wait, uh, I'm still at the same one. Yeah, Stickman is my favorite demo. Uh, we use Miro, which is a drawing tool, and we ask it to draw a Stickman with shoes and hair. So it's going, take the pen, drawing some lines, and starting to look like a Stickman. It's pretty much what we're going to get for shoes. And there we go. OK, now give it a broom. Uh, I think it's good. It's, it's This looks like a conceptual broom. This is where it gets interesting. So it realized that the broom was not connected to the stickman. So it decided to draw it again in the hand of the stickman because we asked, give it a broom. Uh, it did not erase the other broom, but it, it did all of that on its own without us correcting it. It, sorry. Um, so yeah, but the stickmans, you know, like my daughter, three years old daughter can draw a better stickman than that. And the size of the, the size of the head is a little bit offending. Okay. In retrospective, uh, what did we learn? Uh, we learned that building web agent with a uh, very powerful LLM, it works, uh, but it's slow. It's expensive. It's clunky and naive. And also it can be a security risk. We won't dive into that today. Uh, but yeah, like we will have to think about that before releasing agents. Uh, we also show Work Arena. Uh, it's a, a new benchmark for evaluating agents in the, the world of uh, corporate tasks. And we also show Browser Gems, an open source platform for developing and evaluating web agents. Now, moving forward, how are we going to make our agent better? I think one of the first big direction is going to be to fine-tune open source evidence. By doing so, we're going to be able to specialize them for web tasks. We're going to be able to most likely make them faster to run and cheaper to operate, and potentially even better than closed source LNM, since it's going to be more focused and we can uh, we have more control on the training step. Now, uh, we saw that the context window size was a challenge because there's a lot of information to put in context. So one other important direction is going to be retrieval augmented agents. Uh, by doing so, uh, this, this can be done using RAG retrieval augmented generation. And essentially, instead of dumping the whole web page, you can encode it in the semantic database and then use retrieval technique to bring back only the relevant information. If you do that, you can probably put more than one page and also put all the documentation that could be useful for uh, solving the task. Um, and perhaps eventually even put uh, the YouTube video that shows how to do something on the ServiceNow platform, could like retrieve all the important information in there, extract what's useful for solving the task. At this point, sky is the limit. Okay, uh, that's, we're done for today. 